Welcome to Upside Down Mirror, one woman's true story of a twin flame journey, a reflection of true love, true hate, and everything between, where everything and nothing matters at the same time. shatter as mirrors of shadows cut through indestructible layers testing the sands of time hello everyone and welcome to episode 17 of the upside down mirror if you remember at the end of episode 16 Ryan and I had gotten back from the ceremony in Colorado having feelings for one another that we did not have before we left, feelings other than friendship. This was because of an activation that was done, a star activation that was done during the ceremony in Colorado from one of the students in a wake. There was something that I forgot to mention in episode 16 that I think is important. And that is before the activation was even done during the ceremony, before I had realized I had any feelings for Ryan, I was talking to Ryan and I heard in my head, my husband's voice say, this is your husband. And at that point, I definitely did not want that to be true. So I actually felt very panicked and I excused myself and ran upstairs and found Sean and said, are you happy to be married to me? Are you happy that I'm your wife, do you still want to be married to me? And he started laughing and he said, yes, silly, why are you coming up and asking me this? And then I just said, no reason, I just got this feeling downstairs. So then I went back and resumed as normal, working with the awake students. So now we're home and it's time for Ryan to come back to work and finish my house. At this point, he had already fulfilled his end of the barter and he was done working for the academy but he said that he would stay on and be committed until the end of the project which made me super happy because he gave me an extremely extremely good deal for his services and when he was working on the house as he was building the foundation as he was doing anything in the house. He was putting energy work into it. He's putting love into it. And he told me he was doing it with intention. So not only was he a very skilled contractor, but he was also really good at energy work and was putting the two together, which is essentially a dream come true for someone that's building a house. So we had this energy between us that we were choosing not to talk about at first. But what I did notice was what type of person he is he would notice the littlest things like i remember looking at these fake flowers on the internet for like two hours because i wanted to buy these flowers for the dining room table that looked real and i was looking for ones that looked like they had water in them and so it literally took me two hours to pick these flowers out they they came and i put them on the dining room table and he comes up to me about a half an hour after I put them on the dining room table and Ryan is like, I really love those flowers. Like how it really looks like there's water in there. They look very authentic. And he would notice the carpets I would pick out, the curtains I would pick out, the way that I would want things designed. He would talk to me about the designs. And I remember thinking, wow, this is a guy who's very in touch with his divine masculine and his divine feminine. Not only is he out there building with his muscles and working hard, He's got that part of him where he's creative and he can design and he's artistic and he can express his feelings and, and discuss things. So him and I started to spend time together after work 
it started out with just him, my best friend and I doing these healing ceremonies. And what I would notice is, is we'd go downstairs in my basement and we would just work on one another. And I noticed that the type of connection him and I had was indescribable. It's like he just understood on the deepest level what I was talking about. And to be quite honest, I had never met anybody in my entire life who understood on the deepest level what I was talking about because everything to me was energy. If my car breaks down, I'm thinking about what is in my energy field to cause the car to break down so that I can fix that so nothing like that happens again. So it was really unusual for me to be with someone who was in that type of flow like I am. At this point, I never told him anything personal about Sean and I. I only really bragged about our relationship, telling him about the the Tantra and how much I loved my husband. Like he knew how much I loved my husband because I did not keep that a secret. I was kissing my husband in front of him all the time. So he didn't know any of the things that my husband and I had went through, but he would go up to my husband, and this is really the universe at play. He would go up to my husband and say, In video number three, listening to meditation number five, this happened. And he would tell my husband how gifted I am and how I've changed his life just through the academy and just through the modules. And that touched me so deeply because my husband wouldn't even listen to the modules. And he was benefiting from my work. And here, this man who is absolutely not human and I will tell you to this day and I've known him for over two years at this point comes into my life from the stars and tells me how great what I created is and he's working beyond his bartering to complete my house it it came to a point where my husband actually walked up to me and said do you see how hard Ryan is working. Do you see what he's doing for you? And I said, yeah. I said, I can. And this is when I realized this this was hitting a place where I needed to work. You know, you've listened to all these episodes where I'm talking about what Sean has done to me. And then at the same time, I'm telling you it's a mirror. It is. As Ryan was really getting deep into my heart, I mean, if you would have seen the way he he's working on my house and working with me, the way he looked at me, I, it was so much to take. I, I actually felt it. I felt myself start to constrict. And now looking back on it, I'm like, okay, this is why the friction was happening with Sean and I because I was feeling uncomfortable at this point. Then something happened to the house I used to rent that my sister was living in. And the cleaning lady had to break the window to get in. And it was, it was like an hour away. And I told my sister, I said, I could probably have Ryan come down and fix it. He's really good with things and we can get this fixed, you know, so the landlord won't complain. And so I asked Ryan, I said, after work today, can you please ride down to, to the old house with me so we and get the window fixed so my sister doesn't get in trouble by the landlord and he said yes well of course it was getting late we had to go to Lowe's and so we decided to just to spend the night there the house was empty at that point she wasn't there and that's when we were just laying on the living room floor looking at each other and staring into one another's eyes and then I think it was me that asked him you know, if he was feeling the same energy that I was. And of course he started laughing and he was like, absolutely. He's like, I don't want to hurt you or Sean or Willow. I love all of your family. He's like, I didn't expect this to happen. And I said, I didn't either. And we just laid there together in each other's arms. And I just felt like I had known him for eons. And I'm staring at the ceiling thinking, I can't believe this is happening. Who is this guy? Where did he come from? And what am I going to do with this? 
so we come back home the next morning and at this point the other construction workers are definitely looking at us like hey something's up my husband he chooses to ignore it at first I could tell he wasn't bothered by me being around Ryan at all in fact he seemed quite relieved because Ryan would do the things with me that my husband wouldn't like if I wanted to go on the boat or ride around on the jet skis or do something playful Ryan was all for that and my husband would be just like okay yeah you guys go do that and he didn't know or he was unaware of what was going on around him this is until things got so intense that Ryan and I could not be apart I have never felt that way in my life where I couldn't be out of someone's presence it was extremely bizarre I, I can't even explain it it's like being in the womb with a twin and then all of a sudden being separated and feeling like that sense of abandonment that is the way I felt when I was not with Ryan and he felt the same so my husband noticed that Ryan would start to come over you know instead of 8 8 30 in the morning he would come at 6 37 to start to work and then he would bring me a muffin or a coffee and Sean came to me and he's like what is going on why is he sitting in the driveway this early and I didn't really have much to say I just made up some excuse but I could tell that my husband was curious about what was going on and he was definitely paying a lot more attention then one day it all came out what happened was I had invited Ryan and my best friend again to do some healing work but we had actually went to a neutral place outside of the house and we were just doing ceremony together we were doing healing work on one another and what I had bottled up from the wedding came out I think it was because Ryan was seeing me in a way I had never seen myself even I don't think he actually looked at me and said at one point Rebecca I can see you and he looked in my eyes and he said I can see you and there was this piercing energy into in my soul where I knew how much this man loved me I felt it so he provided a safe container for me to start purging these things I needed to purge and we had been married my husband and I for almost two years at this point and stuff started coming up about the about the wedding you know I, I actually started feeling the hurt around him inviting his his friends to the wedding the fact that I felt like he didn't really want to get married the way that he had proposed to me he you know the ring sat in the kitchen for a couple weeks it was a ring that I picked out and then when I said aren't you even going to propose to me he had taken the ring out of the box in front of me his kitchen was dirty he got down on his hands and knees and he proposed to me all these feelings of not being worthy came out and I was like I don't think he really loves me or why would this have happened why did things go down the way they did so I started feeling angry which is just me letting my hurt out because anger is not an initial emotion it covers something up and it was all that hurt and at that time I just felt that was what I was worthy of and then with Ryan looking at me and holding such a safe container I was like purging these emotions and then I started feeling angry and then of course I went home to Sean and told him basically everything that was going on I said do you remember that ceremony in Colorado I told him about the activation I told him about Ryan I said I think I'm in love with him and when I told Sean this I was sitting in the bathtub in water and Sean looked at me horrified and he gets in the bathtub and what happened next I would never expect in a million years he hugs me he lets me cry on his chest and he says I'm going to be here for you Rebecca I'm going to be your best friend through this you can talk to me about this this is right after I told him I actually said to him I think I may be in love with Ryan 
And I told him, I can't be out of his presence. You can't kick Ryan out of this house. Ryan still has to work on this house. He has to finish it. It's very important that he finishes it. It's very important that he's in my life right now. Energetically, I need him in my life. If you make me make this choice, I will end up going with Ryan. I told my husband this. I was being honest. And my husband still let Ryan come to the house and work. Ryan's love for me was very pure and very authentic. At the same time, parallel to him going through this with me, he would go back to Missouri and go through these purges with his wife, soon to be ex-wife, going through feelings for her as well, purging them, coming back, talking to me about them. So, you know, we were both really confused. We knew how we felt about one another, but we had he had a wife and I had a husband, so we weren't really certain what to do with it. My husband was aware of what was going on. My daughter, Willow, she absolutely adored Ryan. She laughed and laughed and played with him. They healed one another. I'm not comparing that to Sean because Willow and Sean had and have an absolutely magical relationship. Willow would laugh and play and have a great time with Sean as well. Matter of fact, Willow has never known a man in her life that has treated her anything other than a princess. Willow, to this day, believes that men love to play Barbie dolls. In her reality, her grandfather, Sean, or Ryan, or one of my sons will play Barbies with her. It's always the guys who come up and play the Barbies. So Willow has a very different perception of men than what I did when I was growing up. Ryan would say these amazing, magical things to me. Like one time he was putting together my bed and it came from this company where the instructions were in Spanish. So he had to figure out how to put together the bed without instructions. And I said something about having to sleep on the floor or on the ground. And he looked at me and he said, I wouldn't care where I slept if it was next to you. At this point, it's like my husband had heard me for the first time, even though I would tell him about this connection I desired, not looking at his phone. It's like he woke the fuck up when this happened. And I'm going to say it like that, Seth, because that's how he acted. He woke up and I even said to him, you remember I had this vision. You remember I called this guy from the stars. This is now playing itself out. I don't know how this is going to end. But what I do know is that we need to be working on ourselves big time right now. My husband was doing everything from cooking me omelets in the morning, bringing me coffee, doing all the chores that I know that he doesn't like to do. He was catering to me, trying to give me as many orgasms as I possibly could so I wouldn't want any more orgasms. You know, it was all very overwhelming because I remember feeling like he's just doing this because Ryan is in love with me. If Ryan wasn't in love with me, then Sean wouldn't be doing this. And I would tell Sean that. I would say, you're only doing this because Ryan. Other than that, you wouldn't be doing this. And he said, no, Rebecca, he's like, I don't want to lose you. So I'm going to say this once again, because it's very important. After I got through the phase of having to be around Ryan all the time, when I let Ryan in to the point where he could look at me and basically read my soul, I started to reject Ryan coming around all the time. After he would do the things he needed to do on the house, I would make up excuses not to see him. I started to spend less and less time with him and he would even say, why aren't you spending time with me? And this was the mirror. This was me not being able to go deeper into my relationship with Ryan, which tells me now that's why I couldn't expect Sean to go deeper because I couldn't. It was Halloween and we had all decided to dress up and go out. And when I say we all, it was my best friend. Sean's girl best friend came down, a girl from his band that he used to play in, and Ryan 
we all went out to this place on the lake where they were having a Halloween party. And I said to Sean, I said, okay, we're going to microdose on mushrooms and I need you to really go deep. I want to know why you invited your friends over on our wedding night. I want to know why your proposal was so unromantic if you really wanted to marry me. I want to know why you didn't tell me that I was beautiful in my wedding dress. I said, I need to know these answers before I can move forward with you. And I don't want a superficial answer. I want an answer that you would get off of doing plant medicine, which is why we are microdosing on the mushrooms. So at this point, Ryan's ego was flaring a little bit. He started getting in that whole guy thing where he was treating me like territory. And then I said to him, this isn't going to work. You need to back up because this is a process that everybody here is going through. I was going through the process with Ryan when he would go and have the flings with his wife, soon to be ex-wife, because he was uncertain of what was going on there. He would come back and he would be completely honest with me about what happened. And then I would back up a little bit from him. And I know he was dealing with what was happening with my husband. So it was happening all around us. And it, it sounds horrible, but it actually really did need to happen for us to really figure out our own intimacy stuff. So we're having this amazing Halloween night where we're dancing and my husband and I are dressed up as a Mr. and Mrs. Vampire. He's like Dracula and I'm a female vampire. And we looked really good together. And I kept telling him, you need to think about this. You need to give me an answer. And his girl breast friend that was with him said, just let me talk to him. I think I can get him through this. She must have spent 45 minutes with him. She calls me over and she's like, I know why this happened. And I'm waiting for some profound answer. And she says to me, because he was stupid. And I'm waiting for her to continue. And she stops. And that's all she says. And I was like, wait, you just talked to him for 45 minutes. And he gave you the answer that he was stupid. And you accepted that. And I said, I know this is about me. But this is why your relationship issues happen. Because that is not an acceptable answer. And so then I walk away and I told him, I was like, I really know everybody at this place and I'm going to go up and I'm going to go on stage. I'm going to take the microphone away from the singer because she'll let me after in between sets. And I'm going to tell everybody what you did to me on my wedding night. And I'm going to ask people to raise their hands and ask and to give me suggestions as to why you did that. He looks petrified at that point and he says, okay, just give me, give me a little bit more time. And so about 15 minutes later, he comes up to me and he says, I don't think I was in love with you. Or he says it like this. He says, I don't think I was crazy in love with you when we got married. That just made everything so much worse. I was absolutely devastated, absolutely heart, heartbroken because When I married him, I saw that he was in love with me. I could see through his eyes that he was in love with me. At that moment, I was just doubting everything. Doubting my guardian parents, which is my higher guidance. Doubting my messages. Doubting what love even was. So then I was just in tears. And of course, Ryan was there. I mean, he was willing to step in at any moment and take me for life. But I had to step in my power and and know this is something that We're all working through. So of course I was really upset. I went home, I wasn't speaking with Sean. And then he told me, he said, right when we got home, I took a shower and I'm thinking about what I told you and what I meant to say. And he's like, you have to understand Rebecca, I can't express my feelings that well. He goes, I can't even feel them like you want me to. He's like, you're the first person that's ever made me even think about feeling this deeply. He said, so to go this deep is really hard for me. And he said, what I meant to say was I don't think I even knew what being in love was when I married you. I'm so much deeper in love with you now than what I was when we got married. He's like, it wasn't even the same type of love. I wasn't allowing myself to feel that deeply for you because of everything that I had been through in my life. 
And I believed him because I knew that he was speaking the truth. And it was right then that he kissed me passionately and I felt that kiss. I felt the same kiss as the night we met each other. It was deep, it was profound, and it was telling a story. And I believed him. So at that moment, I felt like I have my husband. We had a really good night. Things felt very powerful energetically. I asked him that night about the night at ceremony when I heard his voice inside my head say that Ryan was my husband. And he thought about it and he said, if I could have it my way, he would be your ceremony husband. He would be the husband that works with you with the energy work. Once again, my heart sank because I knew that the energy work that I'm talking about isn't actually work. It's a space energetically where someone connects and opens up a healing field. That's what it is. And my husband still wasn't getting that. He actually wanted to give me to another husband and then quote unquote, enjoy me for the rest of the things in life. Despite the level of connection that I had with my husband, the level of connection I had with Ryan was still on a whole different playing field. Ryan and I would always say we had never seen two people work together or just exist together like he and I can. So my husband started to get a bit fed up with everything. It had been some time and I felt like he thought that things should have resolved by now. So he made a rule where Ryan was not allowed to come back in the house ever after the house was complete. And it was completed at this time. So I was allowed to go see Ryan outside of the house, basically anytime I wanted, but Ryan could not come in the house. I told my husband, it's like Ryan is a star brother. Like he's a brother, like a best, best, best friend. Someone that I could not imagine having out of my life at that point. Our connection was so deep. It was beyond any stupid romantic notion. It was when I was around him, I healed on levels that I have never healed before. My husband seemed to understand it. He even said to me, I know the unconditional love that you and Ryan have for one another. He goes, I can see that. And he said, I don't want to step in the way of that unconditional love. I want to be your husband, Rebecca, in every way. And I still want you to see Ryan. I just can't let him in the house right now. It even got to the point where Ryan and I had had something planned. I was going to help him do something business-wise. And it had snowed, and my husband got up to shovel the driveway so that I could drive to go see Ryan. The one aspect that never wavered with my husband, aside of the kissing, because the kissing, to me, kissing is somewhat more telling than what having sex is because kissing like I said if it's done the right way it's telling a story you can tell how the person feels you can tell the connection and so sometimes if you're having sex other than than tantra it can be acted out or mechanical but with my husband the intimacy the sexual intimacy was always really really good my husband was able to express himself in the bedroom in a perfect way, by the way he moved, by the way he touches me, the way way he breathes. During sex, we were always very connected. It was like he was having trouble putting that into words or expressing himself outside of the bedroom because the Tantra was always and is always very powerful with my husband. I had not done Tantra with Ryan, I didn't feel like it was appropriate to to cross that line. So him and I had never actively 
got together and did Tantra with one another. Now there was Tantra energy that came through our relationship because of our connection, but it wasn't a conscious choice like it was with Sean and I. Ryan and I touched each other physically and did physical things, but we never did Tantra with one another. I just want to let you know that my desire when I got married, before I got married, ever since I was born, is to find that one person that I could have heaven on earth with, the one person that would be my best friend, that would be my lover, that would be my confidant, that would play with me on the playground like a little kid, the one person that we knew each other inside and out where we could finish each other's sentences. Not two people, but one person. So every day was a bit torturous for me as I was working through this because I had doubts. I had people around me, even my children saying, mom, it's like you have two husbands, what's going on? You know, my 17 year old daughter said to me, Jackson's mom, which is her boyfriend, thinks that you have a polygamous relationship because you're always with two different people. And my other son said, mom, you're like a walking red flag. I would never let my wife do these type of things with another man. And I couldn't tell them really anything. I just had to tell them the truth that Ryan and I had this connection where I needed to see this out and that Sean knew about it. But things with Ryan and I went to a whole different level when he started to do the ceremonies with me. And I'll talk about that in episode 18.